Orion, Orion, launches Nepal PQ-1. I repeat, Orion launches Nepal PQ-1. In the future, when you read this in the newspaper or see it on TV, this headline, what will come to your mind? Exactly, the next presentation, which is held by Rakesh Chandra Prajapati. Is it yep. correct? Yep. Okay. So he's from Nepal, and he's working in Zurich in Switzerland. He's the founder and CEO of Orion Space, a private space company in Nepal. He's also supervising and funding the Pocket Cube Nano Satellite Project in Nepal. <laughs> so, if you ever wondered yourself how to start a nano satellite project, if you ever want to know this, and who doesn't, then Rakesh will tell you how. <laughs> Please, you. a big welcome. welcome. Hello, good morning. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Well, I'll be talking about uh, how we started the uh, nano satellite project in Nepal and uh, some of the problems, maybe not the problems, how we grew, let's say, like that. So basically, development and the present status. Myself, like I have roughly 10 years of experience in R&D, system integration, VNV, AIT, and mostly in biomedical and space field. Uh, it's difficult to stay in space because I'm from Nepal and sometimes ITAR and different things won't let me work. But uh, yeah, sometimes AIT, in the, like a consulting uh, engineer, I can work, so it depends. And uh, uh, that's the reason why I started Orion Space, because uh, students like me or engineer, uh, engineers like me in Nepal, they might not get opportunity to work in space, uh, even they study masters or PhD because of the regulatory problem. So I thought, why not start a space uh, company in Nepal? So that's how Orion Space started. And roughly we started our activities in 2015 but then we registered in 2017. And by my, uh, like, uh, I have my background in electronics and space uh, from EPFL Lausanne, and I worked on the Swiss Cube, there, there's a picture. Uh, uh, that's in more than one week. And this is a, also a, a Ranger picture, which was launched in 2009. Yeah, and I was working in 2008. And uh, well, I like physics and geometry, so when I'm free, I try to read physics. And this is uh, one of the lab for the particle accelerator. So yeah, if I get free time, I like to do physics. And this is uh, from Ruag Space, where I worked earlier. And you can see why I choose the Orion Space, because I was working at Ruag Space and Orion. Uh, some other time, I will tell you why I choose Orion. Well, the, we are focused on these area like pico satellites, 0 0.1 and 1, uh, 1 kg. That's from the Hungary uh, uh, when I visited them in 2017 or 16. This is uh, a pocket cube, which we'll be talking. This is one of the model from uh, uh, PicoSat, one of my colleague from Australia. So. Uh, I took uh, this model to Nepal and give it to uh, engineering students to have a hands-on feeling like how the satellite looks like and what they are going to design. So thanks for, let's do it, from Australia. And this is one unit uh, model, five centimeter cube, 250 gram, less within 250 gram. And the, uh, why we choose this is because of the uh, affordable for the companies or the university and the capacity building. Okay, talking about uh, Pocket Cube, uh, you can see that the first launch was in 2013, and one of the this uh, uh, $50 set was the idea, like a driving mechanism for most of <coughs> us who are working in Pocket Cube, because this is free 
open source and we like it. So, but then uh, we have to start uh, some li like from the ground, like zero. We don't have any experience. So we thought maybe we follow like that, crawl, walk and fly, run and fly. So that's, uh, for that we started to work with the CANSAT. We heard about it yesterday from Danny. And uh, yeah, I think that, that is a good uh, starting point if you are going to work on uh, PICO or nano satellite because it helps the student to understand what are the basic uh, mm, uh, subsystems, the modules in a PICO satellite. So they learn the, the basic idea of the satellite uh, from the CANSAT, but whereas uh, this is not the real satellite that you are going to launch because they don't have solar panel, the battery is not for the space, and so on. Like there are many things, but at least you understand what are the basic blocks. So that's why we started the CANSAT. And the student, they, I'm very happy that they got the first prize winner in, uh, uh, in a, uh, in a <laughs> in a uh, three, w three days workshop, and they also got the best academic project for, th for their university. And these are some of the papers the student prepared from CANSAT. So, and then uh, why pocket cube? So after we finished the CANSAT, then we said what is next? And the next was uh, pocket cube. So the transition, was not so easy, so I was there as a mentor because of my engineering and space technology background, as well as I was funding the whole project. And the student, the uh, enthusiasm of the students were very, you know, uh, they were ready to do anything. Like, you just feed them, like, study this and that, guide them, and they, they have, they, they come up to the level where I feel easy, now they can make their own decision by themselves. In the beginning, yeah, I need to tell them what to do, but after like roughly six months, they are able to decide what they have to do for, to, to, to design the pocket cube. So after cancer, we went for pocket cube and uh, basic potential is uh, uh, education, research, and training for that kind of application and cheaper uh, test setup. And this is uh, our block diagram. So we try to keep the very, very simple, like EPS, OBC, communication, ADCS, uh, we have one is passive, which is a permanent magnet, and the payload is a radiation sensor. So it's very simple. I mean, this block diagram can also resemble the uh, uh, CANSAT. The only thing would be the different components and different pa parts which are in a space uh, fiber. This is the sensor uh, for the payload. And why we choose this? Because we want to keep a very simple system, so we don't want to have a complex attitude. So for the radiation sensor, it doesn't matter where you rotate or look at. The, so that's the one reason why we choose it. And the other reason is it's a very low power consumption because we have a small area to put the uh, solar cells. So we have low power and low volume and less complex, so that, that gives us the idea like we go for this sensor as a payload. And this is the OBC board combined with COM, COM board, and we saw this concept yesterday also, PQ is 90s <laughs> from Greece. So uh, that's how we learn, like here you can see the first iteration, this is the uh, controller and we had SD card. And second iteration we said, okay, we don't put SD card, we put the communication. And now we have third iteration with the uh, Wildstock because in the beginning we thought we will use the Wildstock from the controller, but then after programming and yeah, we realized that we need the external uh, 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 Wildstock. So we will have third iteration soon. And I will go details later if you, uh, you can ask me technical later. And uh, this is the basic uh, 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 packet of the data, how we want to do it. So basically, we will send uh, 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 Morse code and then ZFSK, which is embedded in the uh, transceiver, and then again Morse code, sleep certain time, and RTPY, ZFSK, RTPY, and open for the uh, uplink so that if we have problem, then there we can 
shut down the, our satellite, or we are also implementing uh, store uh, and forward, like you can send uh, sensor data and uh, receive at some other uh, ground station, like you can read the sensor from remote place, and here you can uplink and receive at the next station, next download. This is the EPS. So, so before uh, we designed our EPS board, we did some test with the uh, development boards, uh, and we have selected SPV1040, and we have some colleagues who are also using the same chip for the uh, uh, power uh, EPS, because it's a MPPT <coughs> embedded system, so we don't have to code for the MPPT uh, uh, operation, and it's very small, and. Uh, it has a very high efficiency. And this is the board we developed, but this is still uh, in the development for phase, you can see that. And the cost and the time, basically this is the cost I just made my estimation. The launch cost is kind of like fixed, 25K for one, uh, one team. And these are like 10K, I said, okay, for the hardware development and everything. And these testing we might have to do outside, so uh, we might have to go outside for the testing. Uh, okay, and uh, the good thing is uh, the engineers now working on the uh, uh, pocket cube are the same students who were working on the cancer. So they recently graduated and I hired them. And you can see like I pay roughly like 200 USD per month now. That's a standard salary in Nepal. And our mission target is that uh, within two years, we, fi we will finish uh, the satellite for launch. Okay, so what kind of challenges do we have? Uh, okay, the, the, the one of the thing is the small volume, so you need to fit everything within this given volume. And the low power, because you have small area for the solar cell. And uh, yeah, this is from the uh, Joe, our friend, colleague back there. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and so like uh, uh, main our challenges are like small area volume and the low power. So we have to f put everything very stacked. So far, this is our stage now. So we have all the boards inside. Uh, the chassis is not complete. It, it's just a rough packing like we want to kind of fit test. We have, uh, you can see small, this is the battery, EPS, communication board, so the other board. And this, this is the antenna. So this is our uh, stage now. But we are talking about the cheaper, uh, uh, cheaper pocket cube, but then the ground station, they could be like 50K again. So we don't want to spend that. So when we Google, we came across Satnox. We had this presentation yesterday, so I won't go through that. And this is our ground station in Nepal. And this is one of the paper student wrote for the pocket cube. So uh, Orion Space, what is the goal? Like promote space education, training and workshop. This is the antenna training I gave when I went to Nepal. So what is our, like why we have this capacity building, motivation, space job opportunity in Nepal. Like So before this Orion Space, <coughs> there was no possible job for the uh, engineer or student to work in real satellite project. Now students are happy. They are building pocket cubes. You can see PCB layout, uh, PCB. This is the uh, uh, ground station, 3D print. Uh, this is that not, uh, 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 no, not that much. Uh, you and NOAA weather satellite. And good thing is that one of our engineer went to Korea for the training in Paris. And one of our student got uh, award, ESL award in Australia last time. Now this is going to be in Bremen, in Germany. I went to CLTP for cancer training. And we went to different university to, to, to teach cancer. So we have two cancers in Nepal, I mean, uh, from the universities. So this is the team. You can see like most of them are students. These, he is also a student. He now, he is working as an engineer. He recently graduated. <coughs> so these two and one and one. So I have four engineers and the others are students. 
So why collect all? Because to inspire the next generation of engineers in Nepal. So thank you very much. And maybe you can see something here. <laughs> if <laughs> because I'm funding everything, that's why. Thank you, Rakesh. Thanks. And now we have time, the audience, to ask question to the guy who's promoting and pushing for open source space in Nepal. So this is your chance. Ask. Hi. Uh, this is a very small satellite. Have you any idea how to send the satellite into the space? Because you know that people, especially army, doesn't like so small object in the space because this is very hard to track mm -hmm. by the radar. Yeah. So normally, it's CubeSat 1U is something the smallest satellite which we can just send to the space. Yeah. Have you idea for this? Yeah, uh, we thought about that. One of the solution would be to have a deployable and uh, solar panel, so that will increase the the cross-section, so that, that is our idea. So we are building a deployable mechanism at the moment, which is not here. So, so this is also like, if you have heard about the um, uh, pin set, which is a, a slice of a, a, a cube set, they are also going to deploy. So they make like a, a, like a empty uh, space with the four, uh, three walls, like a corner. So yeah, it's smart. You you got the idea, right? So, yeah. Okay. A second question is that uh, you show me, for example, that you design some power supply mm -hmm. uh, or the, uh, just the system for getting the power from the solar cells. Uh, have you uh, some numbers for how the efficiency of, of this process? Yes. So basically, what we did is uh, uh, we tested with the halogen lamp, and then we uh, change the uh, like a, a load, and then we plot efficiency, how much in and out power, and then we can, which I don't have it here graph, I try to keep it simple, but we have the efficiency, but uh, I don't remember, maybe it was 70 or something, yeah, not so much, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. In the very back. Hello, um, I have two questions. The first one is, um, are you using uh, open source electronic design software? Yes. And which one is it? Okay, okay. So, um, that was very interesting because we were using the other software, which I won't name it, but then we realized that using two layers and as the design grew, we were kind of handicapped. And then we started with the keycard. Now we are using keycard, yeah. Um, and another question is, do you plan to open source, to, to, to open the designs, yeah, exactly. the electronic designs? Yes, so once we launch it, our idea is to make it open. Yeah. I mean, at the moment also, if you, anybody has question, they can contact us, we are already open. But as an official open, put it on online, we will do it after the launch. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Some more questions. Now is the chance. Feedback, comments. Well, then uh, Rakesh, I have a question uh, regarding open source and business, because this is what you present here. Yeah. You have your company. How do you how do you fund these activities? Yeah, basically, uh, I already mentioned. I think like I'm funding from my pocket, so I keep aside some money and send it to Nepal. In the beginning, well, when they were student, I don't have to pay salary, but uh, <laughs> so then I was paying all the thing like when the student go for training, presentation, workshop, all the travel. And whenever they need to buy like <coughs> development boards, chips, PCB making from China, all those expenses I keep. 
and the, if a student is traveling or doing something on the project also. So, uh, and also the uh, paper uh, uh, publication, like $300, $500 for every single paper. So I'm expanding all of these for the students. And I'm very happy they were progressing very good. And as I told you, like uh, in the beginning I was guiding, but now I don't have to guide. I just can tell them, look for this or do that. And they come up with an idea. Yeah. So I think this deserves already an applause that somebody is paying from his own pocket to support space. Thank you. Thanks. But obviously, unless you are Elon Musk or somebody else who is rich, uh, this is not a sustainable way to do it. So in the long run, uh, yeah. you might want to maybe also discuss in a work group about how to make a sustainable uh, business on, on these activities. So maybe there's some uh, feedback. Yeah, so uh, some feedback uh, question, take it as you want, <laughs> regarding the, the point made by Arthur. We have been discussing uh, yesterday and already this morning also uh, about the, the business models for uh, open source uh, development. And this, I think in this case, actually, it is uh, very clear eh? because I see, I mean, the cost, if you compare with the US, Europe, uh, all the institutions developing uh, CubeSat, uh, Pico satellites, the costs are extremely cheap. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that you provide this like a kind of uh, consultancy support. So you, mm -hmm. even you open source the development, but as you have experience, yes. you need the expertise. So this exactly. is the expertise you got with the CANSAT, now with the Pico satellite. So I think it would have sense that uh, you contact the institutions to say, we develop a mission for you and you take care of the payload, so something exactly. like this. Yeah. yeah, I think we are also thinking the same. One is uh, uh, approaching some other institute that we will prepare their new generation engineers for the real space program. And the other topic is um, we, are, we are planning to build uh, kits like CANSAT kit or even the pocket cube kits. So that can also generate and give a training also. So these are some of the income generation. Yeah. And I would like to add something uh, because uh, recently what happened was uh, uh, we were planning to use Morse code and we put it, uh, the, all the character uh, in, in the memory table, lookup table, and uh, we realized that we, are, we were running out of the memory. And uh, uh, so what, what is the solution? And it's a, one of the students who is now engineer came up with an idea that we are sending only a few uh, character like N and P for Nepal, and uh, maybe some other like uh, few characters. We are not using A to Z, right? So they delete all the unused characters. And that was a very cool idea. Like, uh, I don't tell them, but then they come up with an idea. Like, there are many which are written, and you don't put them on in the memory. So that's one of the good uh, logic they had. So, yeah. This is the thing with the young people. Yeah, they have crazy <laughs> good ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, thank you, Rakesh. Thank you very much.